Hey everybody, how are you doing? Uh, I'm gonna edit here a picture from Bruce Peninsula. I was there on the long weekend. And uh, the picture that I chose is at Indian Cove. It's a seascape picture. It was early at sunrise. I shot this on a Sony A7R2. Now depending what kind of camera you have, as long as you shoot raw, it should be fine for the edit. Now, what I would do here is I shot this at around one second at, let's check, remember, one second at f10. I kept the brighter it got, the more I went a bit higher to get that one second, to get a little bit of motion in the water, but still somehow freeze it. And uh, so usually I prefer f8. I shot this at f10, this was just before sunrise, with nice colors. And I tend to get there usually early, even before the sunrise, to kind of set up and take shots. So I picked here the best ones. Uh, you can see I always bracket it, bracket my shots, but you know I might not use all of them. I just like to bracket just in case. And I picked two sections because you notice here there's some people. And uh, I'll show you what I'll do with that. You can't help it, sometimes people show up. Here it's a clean one. Yeah. So I'll be able to kind of edit this over that to hide over the people. So I'm going to start off with the image that I like the most, and which is this one. I like the water effect here. I also like the water here, but I kind of prefer that one because it's got some kind of some leading lines going out. You get some of the energy. Sorry, it's this one. Some leading lines going out. You get some of the energy of the the water. So, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play around with the white balance, see what shade gets me. I don't like that cloudy. Maybe just stick to daylight or a shot. I think I'll stick to what the camera gave me, that's pretty good. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down with the highlights, not too much. I want to get these out showing. I do like the clouds here, but I I might use that later, maybe not. It's good to have that, so I'm gonna open up the shadows. Good. And I'm gonna use the whites. I'm gonna click Alt and I'm gonna just keep going till I get a hint of white. Not too much. Wait for the red light show up. Not that good with that. Yeah, here. A bit more on that. And the blacks too. I'm gonna press Alt till I get tiny dots. I'm gonna stick with that. Now, let me see before and after. Before, after, before, after. I might have went a bit too much on the white because it's making here too bright. So I'm gonna take that down a I still want to see. Keep it like that. Before, after, before, after. Looking good. So the blacks go down. Here we go. Now, uh, vibrance, I might just do a bit of vibrance, not too much. And I'm going to leave clarity alone. I'm not going to do anything here. I usually bring the sharpening down. I don't want to do my sharpening here. I'm gonna remove chromatic aberration, enable corruption. Just that, I'll just do that in case there's any. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the sky a little darker. I can do it here with the gradients, or I can do it over in Photoshop after, but I think I'll just try it here. I'll do it later on first. <coughs> I'm gonna do a bit of play around with these sliders a little bit, see what I can get. <laughs> get a little bit more. Before, after, 
get more blue here. That's kind of nice. I like that. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm happy with that. I want to go into Photoshop to do some more extreme editing. I like Photoshop for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these settings. So everything selected, copied it. And I'm going to paste it on this one. Because this one I want to use for the, to clear out the people. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to paste it over right here. And it's going to pretty much make them match in terms of color and edit. So when I paste one over the other, it won't look like weird. So I'm going to open these in layers in Photoshop. Edit. Open as layers in Photoshop. Here we go. So now I have the layer of layers loading over each other. So what I'm gonna do is I want use that shot. So I'm gonna put this on top. One with the and I can use this for multiple things. I can use this for bringing in some elements in the sky that I like. But I think I'll just use it to clean out the people. So bring that one. Sorry, this one on top. And I'm gonna create a mask. I'm gonna invert so it's not in black. And I'm gonna take the brush on the percent everything on white. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. And I'm just gonna paint where the people are. Oops. I'm in the clone stuff. I wonder. So I'm gonna go past the hundred percent, and I'm just gonna move like magic. People are gone, as if they weren't there. Now I'm gonna do Alt Command Shift E. That's gonna give me a new layer with the. Everything underneath cleaned up. And after what I'm gonna do is I wanna do curve adjustment. I'm gonna build up the contrast here. Bring that down a little bit. Bring up to an S curve. Not too much. Just wanna get that contrast up. It's looking nice. Oh yeah. See before, after. If I want too much, I can always bring down the opacity, like 50%. It's cool. Now, what I want to do, I'm using here a Wacom tablet. It makes it easier for any editing. You don't have to use that, but I prefer to use that. So it makes it easy. Next thing I'm going to do is I want to do, do like an bit of glow this whole image I do that with his capes it's very nice so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new layer actually no sorry I'm gonna do a merge of all the layers that's command shift E Apple command shift and E So that gives me everything. So, and what I'll do is I'm gonna go to filter. I'm gonna go to blur. Gaussian blur. I usually do it at 
27.5% that's great areas so I'll do that and then I'm gonna go to image adjustments break this contrast now that looks blurry I'm gonna bring out the contrast a lot all the way just the brightness a little bit eight or nine press ok and then I'm gonna come here in the opacity and bring it down to like 10 before or after before or after just give it a little bit of glow and I just like that with with the seascape of water because I find like just make it glowy and dreamy even more now what I'm gonna do also is I'm gonna do some saturation in certain areas so I'm gonna go do the saturation layer and I'm gonna use the select tool and I want to target this area and bring it up too much because it starts to get a little crazy just maybe a little bit here we go I'll make another one even saturation maybe do it for the sky because I find the sky could use a boost too usually maybe just a tiny bit because it's a Affecting the water as well. I'm gonna go crazy. Maybe a bit more. Alright, it's pretty cool. Okay, so next, what I'm gonna do is I want to do some dodging and burning because I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to change it to soft light. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the brush, give it on white, bring down the opacity like really low, it's like 4%. And I'm going to just paint where I want, and create a mask. I don't need to create a mask, sorry. So I'm going to use the brush, a big soft brush. Oops. Okay. Brush, sour and white, a little bit bigger. I'm going to just paint where I want to just bring in some do some dodging and burning. Oh, that's too much. 92%. Oh. Bring it down to 4. And 6%. I'm just going to paint in where I want a small glow. If you get some of these on these rocks here, some on the water here. Give it depth. I find like your eye follows the light, so you want this part to be brighter. So like your eye will just be drawn in through the light. You know? Might do a bit here, this a bit there. Now I'm going here just pretty much where I think that I could use a bit more here. Get some shiny rocks. <laughs> so I'd like to do one more in saturation layer for this little part in the water because I find this nice picking up off the sky. I'd like it to be warm. Whoa. It's affecting the blues. I want the blues and magenta. Here we go. Not too much. Let's see if I did that. Did that do anything? Yeah, that's nice, I like that. Now, <coughs> so I'm back to the Dodge and Burning layer. So I did that, I like it. See before and after, you can see. 
I will just make it a little brighter and kind of make these bits a bit. Maybe I'll just do another pass with the brush. So I'll go lower a bit. Percent. And I'll just paint a little bit more here. I want this to look like electric, you know? Like, just get it. Here we go. Nice. So that looks nice. I'm happy with that. A little bit here. Okay, so I'm going to make another layer and I'm going to go to overlay and also I'm going to use black. What I want to do here is I want to create a bit of a vignette. I'm going to go with a large brush. It's kind of low, so I'm just going to do my own vignette. And I can pass a few times till I get it to where I like it. <coughs> So um, just a few times, a little bit here too. See what that looks like before, after, before. It's pretty good. Just a little bit of a vignette. If I want too much, I can always come down the opacity and reduce it. It's more subtle. Yep, that's good. That's what I like about uh, Photoshop is you can always if you go crazy on one. I'll always bring it back down a bit. It's all good. All right, let's see next what I can do. I might just do an overall. I might do a curves adjustment for the midtones. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna use the Tony Kuiper action panel. And here I have basic, you can download that online, it's not that expensive and it makes your life a bit easy. If I want to do a mid-tone adjustment for, just to make the water brighter a bit here, what I'm do is I'm gonna try one of these options, you know, so I'm gonna select mid-tone, I'm gonna select curves, under curves, mid-tones one, let's see what that chooses. And make some calculations. Let's see. I have to click on the curve and then when I do that. Make it brighter. Darker. Or I might just try a different one. Because I don't like what it selected. Not my target, so I'm gonna go back to this one. I'm gonna select basic. Let me try midtones too. Mm. Let me go to the curve adjustment. Just a bit of brightness. See before, after, before, after, before. Yeah, I like it. Just a little bit. Maybe I went too much. Just come down a bit. Oops. So, it's pretty much what you feel like it too. Just kind of go with it, you know. It's some of the things that I do. All right. And next, I'm gonna do a new. I'm gonna do a layer mix of everything I have, so I'm gonna click Alt Command, Alt Shift and E. That's gonna do it's gonna merge all the layers underneath and make a new layer on top. I'm gonna get the healing brush because I noticed a few things I don't like. There was a cone here I was babbling about, so I'm gonna clean that up. I might just zoom in a little bit to like hundred percent and get the same. This here. Now, flex the brush, zoom back, and I'm just gonna scroll, see if there's anything I don't like. There's like a weird line here. I'm sure there's some dust on the sensor that I like to clean up, like this one here. Oh, there's one right here. 
if you want to show this print this or sell this pretty much can't have spots just sticking around you know so you want it to be clean and sticking clean now I might notice some stuff that I didn't notice before getting in like when I was there early there are still people walking about like this I think in the shop let's see what the healing brush did a good job even though I come here early in the morning at sunrise and you think there's gonna be nobody you can always be surprised someone always shows up even oops even if you don't want to someone will always show up but it wasn't like the crowds during the day or it's just massive so that looks pretty good nothing that I don't like all right so I'm gonna zoom back out the screen since before or after just a few things okay now what I'm gonna do is not happy with that. I'm just gonna see what I, if I do another curve adjustment layer. Just try to boost the contrast a bit more. I like a really contrasty image. Alright. That might be a bit much, so I'm gonna bring down the opacity too. To like twenty percent. See what that did there before, after. Definitely add a little bit something here to those walls. So I like that. Now what I want to do is. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna do another layer of soft light. Or actually, I'm gonna keep it as is. I'm gonna put overlay. And I just wanna go and find a small brush. I just wanna work on these rocks. So before I went, I did a pass with the soft light and the low opacity with white, and I just made it a little brighter. But I found with rocks, if I just do a little, a little darkening here and there, it just makes the edges come out even more, just to create a bit more contrast. The bright bits, the dark bits. So I'm just going in where I feel like, even you know, it's kind of a I feel like let's see if that or you don't really see it much, just for me, kind of what I like about it, you know, and. One thing I'm gonna do more, I'm gonna merge, like I said, do another layer of everything underneath. So I'll just come in. It's gonna merge everything underneath, make a new layer. So now I have this layer. What I'm gonna do is I wanna make a filter high pass. Do a bit of sharpening. You remember earlier in Lightroom, Turn on sharpening to zero because I like to do it here. And you can see it's gonna show you roughly where where it's doing it. I like to keep it at three percent and click OK. See now it just made it gray. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to either overlay. That will make it nice and sharp. You don't really see it much here because it's just a subtle difference. But if I zoom in to a hundred percent. I like to and scroll up to the rocks here. If I show you before and after, it's like it makes it just 
nice and sharp. All right, so now I'm gonna go back smaller. Be happy with that. Let's just go down all the way. B4, and I turn B5 on, all the way up. This is after, pretty nice. So, the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this as a JPEG for me to share it. But to me, first, it's one more thing is um, image size, it's pretty good, keep it as is. But I'm gonna convert the profile. Now, if I save this, it's gonna go back to Lightroom, or I can save it as PSD to keep my layers. But I'm gonna convert this to Adobe RGB and click it. This is me saving it as a night ready to print copy. So, what happened is that pretty much took all the layers, but I'm gonna save as I'm gonna put it in the right folder that I want, select JPEG and call it Indian Cove. So it's Indian Cove Sunrise. Uh, so I'm gonna name it just Indian Cove. Okay, I'm gonna save that. Click OK. And I have one that's ready for print. If I ever wanna print that. Now what I'm gonna do is I wanna create a web version of this. If you have the Tony Kuiper action panel, I'm gonna first step backwards. And here I'm gonna convert the profile. And this time I'm gonna do it as RGB for web. Click OK and do the same thing. No. Here I'm gonna go to actions. See, I have web sharpening. I like to do that. This I like to keep it big for web, so I'm gonna keep it selected like that. Horizontal. If you have a vertical image, select vertical. Click OK, and it's gonna make a new document with the sharpening, but in the output size that you want. And that's doing it on the long end, so it's 2048 on the long end. So now I'll be able to file, save as. This select JPEG and get yeah, something like this. I'm gonna okay. And now I have one for web and one for print, and that's pretty much it. Now I can go upload it, share it, whatever I want. Facebook, Google Plus, and that's it. Thanks, guys.